Hello there, hello there, welcome to CXC Math TV. In this video, we're going to be looking at conditional probability. So the first question you may ask is, what is this conditional probability? And then later on, we look at tree diagram. But let's get back to conditional probability. Well, let's first start with conditional probability. Now, if two events, A and B, they don't have to be from the same experiment then the conditional probability that event a is going to occur given that event b has already occurred this is written as p in bracket a with a slash b now that slash right there means given the slash means given so p in bracket a slash b means finding the probability event a occurred given that event B already occurred. The formula for conditional probability is denoted by P in bracket A slash B and it's computed by the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. Now it's important to note that conditional probability, we're just finding the likelihood of an event occurring given that a previous event has already occurred. That's all we're doing. For example, think about this. John Mark is training for the 400 meter at sports day. What is the probability John Mark will win the open men's 400 meter given that he is in the final? Or what if the question had asked, what is the probability that John Mark will win the 400 meter finals? In order to compute the probability that John Mark would win the finals, given that he's already in the finals, he would be competing against seven other competitors, and so the probability of him then winning would be 1 over 8. Now, in order to compute the probability that John Mark will win the finals, when no other instructions were given, then we'd first have to know how many persons are taking part in the 400 meter event from the prelims. So if it's 30 person, then the probability of him winning would be one over 30. If it's 25 persons, then the probability of him winning would be one over just the amount of persons that is doing the event. So notice that we got two different results because why? Conditional probability, what was the chance of John Mark winning given that he made the finals? That is conditional probability. Finding the probability an event occurs given that a previous event had already occurred. All right. So the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. So let's do some examples to see how would we compute conditional probability. Now look at this question here. Question 1 says the probability of x given y is equal to 1 over 5. The probability of y is 1 over 8. The probability of x is 1 over 6. Find the probability of x intersect y and the probability of y given x. And as we can see, we also have question 2 and question number 3. So we're going to start by taking on question number 1. Now, the probability of x given y is equal to 1 over 5. The probability of y is 1 over 8. And the probability of x is 1 over 6. So, find the probability of x intersect y. Well, we start by remembering the formula. So, the probability of x given y is equal to the probability of x intersect y divided by the probability of y. That's applying the definition. Now, look at this right there. We can transpose and make the probability of x intersect y the subject to get the probability of x intersect y is equal to the probability of x given y times the probability of y. And so the probability of x intersect y is equal to the probability of x given y, the told us was 1 over 5. 
and then we multiply that the by the probability of y which you know is 1 over 8 and so the probability of x intersect y is 1 over 40. So that means that the probability that events x occur simultaneously with event y is 1 over 40. Now part 2 says find the probability of y given x. Now applying the definition, the probability of y given x is going to be the probability of y intersect x over the probability of x. But the probability of y intersect x is the same as the probability of x intersect y. So that's going to be 1 over 40 divided by the probability of x and the probability of x is 1 over 6. We do the division and we get 3 over 20. Beautiful. That is question number 1. Let's have a look at question 2. It says events A and B are such that the probability of A is 2 over 7. The probability of A given B is 4 over 9 and the probability of B is 1 over 8. Find the probability of A intersect B and the probability of B given A. So go ahead and pause and attempt question number 2. In this question, first thing is we write down the formula. The probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B. And so the probability of A intersect B, if we transpose it, it's going to be the probability of A given B times the probability of B. But the probability of A given B is what? 4 over 9. Then we multiply that by the probability of B, which we know is 1 over 8. And so when you put that in your calculator, you get 1 over 18 when you simplify it. Now part 2. The probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B intersect A over the probability of A. So that is going to be 1 over 18 divided by the probability of A given above is 2 over 7. We'll put that in our calculator and we get 7 over 36. It is that easy. Nice. Now, let's look at this question right here. It says two independent events P and Q are such that the probability of F is 3 over 7 and the probability of F intersect G complement is 1 over 4. The probability of F given G is 1 over 3. Find the probability of G and then find the probability of G given F. So go ahead, pause and attempt this question. In doing this question, the first thing we need to find is the probability of F intersect G. Now, we have to go back to using the law we learned from, the rules of probability. So the probability of F is equal to the probability of F intersect G complement plus the probability of F intersect G. So if we substitute, we're getting that the probability of F is going to be 3 over 7. That's equal to probability of F intersect G complement, 1 over 4, plus the probability of F intersect G. That is, we don't know. Now, we just need to transpose and make the probability of F intersect G the subject. And transposing, we're going to get 3 over 7 minus 1 over 4. That works out to be 5 over 28. And so the probability of F intersect G works out just to be 5 over 28. Nice. All right. Now that we've computed the intersection, now we're able to compute the probability of G. But what do we know? First, we do know is that the probability of F given G is equal to the probability of F intersect G divided by the probability of G. That's the first thing we do know. So if we transpose and make the probability of G the subject, we're going to get that the probability of G is now the probability of F intersect G divided by the probability of F given G. Now look at that. The probability of F intersect G, we found already it's 5 over 28 divided by the probability of F given G and that's given above to be 1 over 3. Now doing the division, that's going to work out to be 15 over 28. And so finally, we can get that the probability of G is 15 over 28. Notice how many computations we had to do. First, we had to go back to the laws of the probability and 
we had to first figure out what is the probability of f intersect g and then we had to come back and use conditional probability so be prepared where you have to use two or more probability formulas or rules in order to arrive at your answer now let's look at part number two part number two or part two says find the probability of g given f that is just going to be the probability g given f this is now the probability of g intersect f divided by the probability of f so that's going to be 5 over 28 divided by 3 over 27. We put that into our calculator and you get 5 over 12. Nice. So that is how we can do this question right here. And we notice we had to remember the laws of probability as well in order to do this question. So sometime you're going to have to intertwine the laws of probability that we learned the complement law, the union law, the intersect law, the De Morgan's law with the conditional probability formula in order to arrive at your answer. All right. And so that's it. That takes care of this video. So stay tuned for more as in the next video, we're going to be looking at tree diagrams. All right. So stay tuned and have a blessed day.